Get off this thing. What a fun bike to ride. What a blast. Total wheelie machine. I forgot how good these are. My first street bike I had, my first real street bike, was a RD 350 when I was 16 years old. I have a little brother in this one. I think it was a 70, 74 uh, or 5. It was a little orange one. Uh, this is the big brother. This is a red RD 400. Arguably the best color they ever came in. And boy, what a fun machine. This is the best handling. Uh, best stopping RD I've ridden. It's tuned to perfection. Has the uh, K&N air filters and the jetting's been done on it. Brand new tires and brakes. Upgraded uh, um, calipers and brake pads, so it stops on a dime. I think a good rider could do a stoppy on this thing very easily. So it's ready to rumble. Uh, starts right up, first kick. Everything works beautifully on it. Whoops. Put the button up to run. <laughs> It'll work better. Start first kick when the button's on run. Um, every time, watch. That's it. I see I shut it off with this button right here. Shut it off. First kick. Every single time. Everything works beautifully. The horn, turn signals, high beam, low beam. Everything's on point. Brake light works good. today but I'd much rather be doing this than stuck in the office. This thing's a blast to ride. I'll take it for a quick rip down the road so you can hear how it runs. here today but the figures are getting a little frozen. Wanna bring it in? Yeah. Cycles on site the New England Motorcycle Museum, and today is a great day. I get to ride this RD400, and Buddy gets to bark at me about it. Shh, why? Come here. What do you want? He's a beast. He's a hairy beast. Anyways, um, this is an extremely rare. Ask yourself, when's the last time you've seen an all original RD400 that runs like a dime piece? Just been completely gone through by the best jet bike tech east of the river, Mark Olson. He's our lead tech here. I have a two page work order. Uh, we just put a total of 
uh, $4,010 in parts, labor, and services in another bike. Went through it top to bottom. I'll go over everything in the details in a second, but I wanted to start with the cosmetic features of the bike first. First, it's 100% stock original. This is an original seat. Armin Bassett and his dad, who were here last week, saw this bike and they're like, wow, is that an NOS seat? They're like, I don't even want to touch it because when's the last time you've seen a 41 year old Jap bike seat this clean? It's beautiful. The underside has a little bit of patina, but it's, it's in beautiful shape. You just, you just don't see them like this. Even has the, um, even the foam is in beautiful shape. Obviously a bike that was uh, well cared for, never abused. The original turn uh, tool kit is in there. Uh, brand new battery, uh, everything stock and original under here. There is a, a fair amount of patina on the bike, on the chrome uh, that you can see obviously, but it's original and chrome plating is easy. You can take the fender and the original pipe, send them out to New England chrome plating. You can get the fender done for maybe 100, 150 bucks. Um, I was gonna put a reproduction fender on it, but I decided to leave it original because the bike's only original once. You can buy reproduction fenders for 150 bucks on eBay. A front rear set fender set for about 280. Um, so I left the original front fender on there and you can see the chrome has failed on it But there's I don't see any any uh, dents on it or dings. So it should be an easy um, Re-chrome to brand new condition same thing with the fork sliders original fork sliders have a little patina on them also and the turn signals But the, the bike could be re-chromed easily the original paint is one of the nicest I've seen in a long time, I love the red color. It has an orange and black. It's an original Yamaha uh, decal set on here. Um, bike's original. The NADA value of an original stock one of these right now is, uh, if you look online, it's $8,400 uh, for a number one bike. I'd say this is close to a number one bike and easily could be made a number one bike. Uh, mechanically, it's perfect. Everything runs, works great on it. Starts, runs excellent. The auto lube injection works great. And it's a fun, fun bike to ride and it hauls the mail. Uh, but one of the items that we did modify, or the, actually the previous owner modified, is they put the k and uh, filter, pod filters on here, removed the air box, and jetted it to run. Uh, it has a lot more of an intake growl, and it definitely accelerates better because you're getting a lot more air into the engine. The exhaust system stock. Um, I have heard one of these, you can remove the baffles, and they sound mint without the baffles in them, but this one's stock, so they'll go through inspection with the stock mufflers, turn signals, brakes. Every light on the bike works perfectly. The brakes are all brand new or rebuilt. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, it's just fantastic, fantastic fun bike to ride. And that's what it's all about. So let me go over the work order with you while Kenny walks around the bike again. A total of 30 hours labor uh, between the detail and mechanical part. Uh, just over $1,000 in parts um, and uh, shipping. So in any event, we did a complete inspection and evaluation of the bike. Uh, we did the carb clean, fuel tank clean, petcock rebuild, major tune-up, brand new battery, all the electrical uh, bulbs, if it needed anything, was done, and the brakes were rebuilt front and back in new tires. So we checked the cylinder compression, 125 PSI per cylinder, which was perfect. We checked for play in the rods, so the lower end's nice and tight. Um, no issues with the lower end bearings or, or, or uh, top end bearings. Installed brand new spark plugs in it. We replaced the left and right points assembly and the condenser. We clean and lube the points cam, clean and lube the cam follower bolt pad, set the point gap, adjusted the timing, inspected the ignition coil, primary and secondary resistance, and then installed a brand new Wasa battery. We cleaned the positive and negative cable terminals, inspected and cleaned the fuses, checked the battery voltage to the coils, disassembled the right switch assembly to clean and lube the kill switch contacts, and checked the voltage to the coils. It's perfect. Check the spark, perfect and strong. We removed and replaced the carburetors after doing a complete clean and adjust with new gaskets, new O-rings, new seals, clean and oiled the, the k and filters, pod filters, and put brand new fuel lines on it. Um, the gas tank was removed. It was bicarbonate sodium blasted on the inside, and then a process called metal rescue was used on the fuel tank interior. I want to show you this. The uh, um, fuel tank is not coated. I don't know if you can see it. It's, um, it's the original. Uh, factory liner, metal liner, but it has a, um, a uh, it's been thoroughly cleaned, uh, bicarbonate sodium blasted, rinsed, and then metal rescue, which cleans any of the surface rust out, and then it was lubricated with WD-40 before the, um, the new gas was installed. And it has pump gas in it, it's running a 93 octane gas with uh, stable mixed with it so that it won't go bad, and it has the Yamalu auto injector <coughs> oil in the injection system, so the tank is Excellent on the inside. We then filled, uh, we, we then rebuilt the original OEM fuel petcock. It's not an aftermarket petcock, it's an original Yamaha petcock. We replaced the crossover fuel lines on the tank, filled it with fuel, and tested the petcock operation, which is perfect. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Then we disassemble and clean the throttle housing, throttle pipe, and handlebar. Service the throttle cable assembly with cable luber flush uh, for the four inner cables. We also flush out the four inner cables with the contact cleaner, then compressed air, and then the cable lube. So it's like a three-step process on the cable, so they're perfect. We cleaned and lubed the cable splitter junction to the oil pump, installed the cable, and adjusted the free plate, and also did the throttle slide synchronization and the oil pump synchronization, so it's injecting the exact amount of auto lube injector that is supposed to be in there. We adjusted the free plate and the throttle slide synchronization and the oil pump synchronization. Who, who did all this work? Well, none other than our uh, premier world-class A-Tech, Mark Olson, who does frame-off restorations on bikes, and uh, this one here, he did all the mechanical work, so it was done by a true professional who's been working on jet bikes for 40 years, so uh, it was done right in-house here by a licensed dealership. Mark then drained the oil tank, blew off the oil supply line tank to the pump, and filled it with new oil and bled the pump, uh, which is something that like, a backyard mechanic might forget to do. And then they run the engine dry up oil. That wasn't done. This was done by a pro. Um, we drained and filled the transmission gear oil and replaced the drain bolt gasket. Um, so that pretty much uh, summarizes everything that was done, along with the electrical functions, the lights, uh, turn signals, everything's perfect. Uh, we also replaced the, the the A beam, the high beam indicator bolt. So there's a high beam indicator bolt inside of the TAC and Speedo. That was the only electrical issue the bike had, so Mark put a brand new bulb in it, and that works beautifully. As you can see, the turn signals work great. Uh, front and rear, uh, the high beam and low beam work beautifully. The bike has to be started for the lights to come on. Uh, the tail light works beautifully, as does the uh, uh, brake light and the turn signals left and right, and you'll see when it's when it's running, uh, how everything works. So, um, my test right, in the test right portion of it. Then we went through the rest of the bike. The whole front end was removed, the four pegs were removed to replace the, 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 the dust seals. Um, and the uh, uh, fork tubes, as I noted, are a little bit pitted. So, um, that's not affecting, there's no oil leaking from them. They work fine right now, but at some point when you re chrome the rest of the chrome, you might want to do that. Um, we inspected the steering head bearing adjustment and adjusted that. The front wheel was removed and mounted and balanced a brand new front tire. When I say brand new, look at the nubs on that thing. Uh, it's been rolled from the shop up to here, so there's a little bit of sand on the tire, but it's a, trust me, it's a brand new tire. Um, and uh, correct size and tread pattern. I'm going to add that. This is, this is the actual correct size and tread pattern for this vintage motorcycle. The, um, uh, let's see. I lost my place here. Uh, it's a two-page list here, so bear with me. The uh, front brake master cylinder was rebuilt and installed a reproduction front caliper. And look at the front caliper on this motorcycle can. It looks exactly like the original Yamaha, but it's a reproduction caliper that's made out of alloy, not cast iron like the original ones, uh, which would rust. And it's also, if you pick that caliper up, it weighs maybe a third of the weight. The stock ones are super heavy, so you have a little bit less unsprung weight, so it looks 100% stock, but that's a reproduction high performance alloy caliper. Brand new freight front brake pads were, pads were installed and then we bled the brakes. Uh, we Then the went to the rear end, took the chain, sprockets rear wheel off, brake system off, and went through everything back there. We mount, mounted and balanced the brand new rear tire and tube, which is also the correct size and tread pattern. Installed the new reproduction, like the front, rear caliper assembly, made out of alloy, much lighter, with brand new brake pads. Um, we installed a new, brand new master cylinder. It's a Magura rear master cylinder. That's this piece uh, right here, Kenny. Um, brand new brake master cylinder. Uh, let's see. Um, new, re uh, new, I lost my place here again. New rear master cylinder with a custom mount bracket. Um, and then bled the brake fluid on the rear. Adjusted the chain slack. The, the, the rear chain is new. It has less than 200 miles on it. Checked all electrical functions and the lights. Repaired the one of the turn signals into the bulb and the high beam indicator bulb. That was basically it. And then test rode it. And as you can see from the videos, it, uh, it runs fantastic. Um, and is as close to uh, new mechanical running condition as you're going to find for a 41 year old bike. True classic that's only going up in value. If you want to buy this bike and leave it here in the museum, you can leave it here as long as you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to pick it up right away, you can do that too. We can ship this bike anywhere on the East Coast uh, for, what was it, what was it, uh, East Coast price? 
Uh, 500 or under. 500 or under. So we're about as far north as you can get. We're, we're north of Hartford, Connecticut by, uh, and below Boston. We can get this all the way to anywhere in Florida for 500 or less. And less if it's up higher up the East Coast. West Coast, 625 or less. So the shipping, don't let that bother you. Um, you won't pay sales tax if we're shipping it over the state line. And uh, that's about it. Um, bike's a fantastic machine. I wish I could keep it myself. I love RDs. I, I guess I'll summarize by saying this. Uh, Mike Bouchard, who was the manager of Mickey Finn's Honda for 30 years, he just retired. His daily rider was a 77 Yamaha RD4, just like this, a stock. And he could ride any Honda he wanted, but he loved these old Yamaha RDs. They're fun, they're fast, they're, they're affordable, and they're a fantastic investment. Obviously, this bike has a retail value of $8,400 in number one condition. So we'll let the market determine what it's worth. We put about half of what it's worth uh, at retail in parts of labor just over four thousand dollars so you be the judge um, we'll let the we'll let the um, motorcycle community decide what the final value is so we're going to auction it off so good luck bidding on it if you have any questions give us a call 860-454-7024 uh, stay tuned and if you're in the area come by april 21st we have 1400 tickets left for the new england motorcycle museum first annual brew fest it's at the hockenham h-o-c-k-a-n-u-m hockenham Brewfest.com if you want to buy tickets. Uh, there's 25 microbreweries that are going to be here, uh, 10 food vendors, and we have a Dunkin' Donuts truck here to sober you up before you leave. So, uh, or we can get you an Uber ride home, but it's going to be fun. Bikes, beers, and food. So, how can you beat that at the beautiful grounds of the New England Motorcycle Museum? The museum will be in full swing. Tons of great old bikes to look at and new bikes. So, good luck bidding on this bike. Kenny, did I leave anything out? I think that's it, Ken. I think that pretty much summarizes it. Uh, good luck bidding on the bike. God bless America.